Well, here it is. The end of my proverbial SIM card swapping has come to an end. I no longer am using the i12 TWS as my daily driver. Well, Icarus, you flew too close to the sun and got burned. We were on the verge of greatness. We were this close. But I suppose when you're undercutting Apple by almost 90%, a few corners had to be cut in the quality assurance department. And let me tell you, quite a few corners were cut. My aim here at Vimitation is to bring you quality products that offer a lot of value for a little price. Which is why I cannot in good conscience recommend these. Unfortunately, I really wanted to like these, but they missed the mark on a few places. So first is an issue with the way that Bluetooth works. Bluetooth creates a secure connection between the device and the client. Now this is a problem when you have two earbuds, each with their own MAC address. What ends up happening when you pair these is one earbud becomes the master, the other becomes the slave. So the first earbud becomes a pass-through for the secondary earbud. The first issue with this is it creates latency. There's about five milliseconds delay between each earbud because whatever's the master has to pass the audio through. Now, for the untrained ear, this is going to be a non-issue, which is why I consider it livable. The next problem with having two devices with separate MAC addresses is what ends up happening when you try to pair the other earbud. So in my unboxing, I paired the right earbud first, and the left became the slave. Well, what ended up happening one day is I pulled out the left earbud, and it just got stuck. And I was confused until I realized that the left earbud has never actually been paired with my device. Only the right earbud has. So the solution for this is you end up pairing the left earbud with your device and the right earbud with your device, and it doesn't matter which you pull out first. So then the next problem is that there's actually no internal distinction to which is the right earbud and which is the left earbud. It assumes that the first one you pull out is the right earbud and the second one is the left earbud. So whichever becomes the master earbud is the right earbud and whichever is the slave is the left. So the problem with this though is the right channel audio then is coming out of the left ear and the left channel audio is coming out of the right ear, which for music doesn't really matter. But what happens when you're watching a show or playing a game is it creates an audio visual disconnect and you're confused because when you're playing Fortnite, not sponsored by the way, when you're playing Fortnite and you see the guy on the left, you hear him coming on the right. Then the next problem with that is the touch functionality because normally you double tap on the right earbud to increase the volume and the left earbud to decrease the volume. But if you've pulled out the left one first, it thinks it's the right earbud. Then you double tap on the left earbud and that decreases the volume and the right decreases the volume. So to mitigate both of these issues, just make sure that you pull out the right earbud first and connect it to your device. So in my first video, then I was actually incorrect. Um, I held the earbud for three seconds to launch Google Assistant and it never launched. What ended up happening though, was they didn't have it installed on my tablet and so it never actually launched. I tried it on my phone and it does work. The final weird thing with touch functionality is the triple tap should skip you to the next song and triple tap on the left earbud should go to the previous song. Those are actually swapped. So assuming your right earbud is the master earbud and your left earbud is the slave earbud, if you triple tap on the right, it'll actually send you back. And if you triple tap on the left, that will skip the song. Just something to be aware of. Again, none of these are deal breakers, but they are QA things that if they had been caught earlier, they would have made these even better. Now, with regard to audio, for a pair of $15 headphones, these actually sound really good. There were a lot of songs that I'd heard before and as I was listening, I would hear new instruments, which is an indicator that these are actually more quality headphones than what I had been using before. Now, a problem with speakers is it's hard for them to reproduce the human voice. And so these fall short a little bit in the vocals department. Singers sound a little muddied is the best to describe it. But anything that isn't the human voice sounds great. Next, they do fall short in phone calls. People I talked to said they sound a little bit quiet. For me personally, not a deal breaker because I barely ever talk on the phone, but for you, that might be a big issue. Now let's get onto the big deal breakers for me. The first is the amount of time it takes to pair these with a device. Most Bluetooth devices that I have take about three to five seconds to pair. These take about 15 seconds. So if you're on Wall Street or you're in high school and you pull these out, it's gonna have a flashing red and blue light for 15 seconds. People are gonna know you don't belong. So. To solve this issue, just, I guess, hold it in your hand while it's pairing and hide the flashing red and blue light. I don't know. Uh, or, you know, you can just flaunt that they're fake AirPods. Uh, it's up to you. So my next issue is with the battery. Um, when I put them in 
when I put the earbuds back in the case, then it's like when the refrigerator, when you shut the refrigerator door, we don't actually know if the light turns off. That's kind of how I feel about these. I don't know if the earbud turned off. I don't know if it's charging. There's no real good way to see what's going on with the earbud. Then the next issue is the case never seems to stop charging the device. So throughout the day, it'll constantly drain the case's battery. And then at night, when the case is empty, the earbuds think that they've been pulled out of the case because they're not being charged anymore. And then they'll connect to whatever device you have and then drain the battery. This is an issue if you don't charge your case every night because then in the morning, everything's dead. There were a couple times that I would get up, take these with me, put them in, and nothing would happen because they drained overnight. So make sure to charge these every night if you're actually gonna use them. And now we get to my biggest deal breaker. The reason I bought these is because my phone doesn't have a headphone jack and I like to listen to audiobooks. I like to walk around too with having only one headphone in and the other not. But it's really annoying because most of my headphones, they just kind of dangle there. So I wanted to get ones where I could just put one earbud in and it would be fine. Well, that's where they fall short, in audiobooks. So in cheaper Bluetooth devices, there's a sleep functionality. When no audio is being transmitted through the Bluetooth device, then it turns, it puts the device in a sleep mode. And then when audio starts getting transferred, then the device wakes. But the problem is, is there's about a quarter second delay between when the device wakes and when audio is being sent. So for example, in audiobooks, when there's a long pause between sentences, then it'll cut off the first word of a sentence. So for example, it says chapter one, once upon a time, which then in reality sounds like after one, it's upon a time. For me, this is the biggest deal breaker. I tried it in different audiobook apps. All of them experience the same thing. So it's not an issue with an app, it's an issue with the Bluetooth device. But because of the issue with audiobooks, I personally cannot recommend these. If all you do is listen to music, you're willing to wait 15 seconds for them to connect, willing to charge them every night, and can get used to the funky user interface, then I say go for it. They're a great value, and they sound, in my opinion, perfectly fine. If you're willing to take the plunge, I'll put a link to these headphones in the description below from AliExpress. Let me know in the comments below if you think that at one-tenth the price, these are actually a good alternative to AirPods. And speaking of audiobooks, a word from our sponsor. Just kidding, I don't have any sponsors. I'm too small of a channel. And as usual, hit like, get subscribed, and share this with all your value imitation friends because YouTube algorithms aren't cutting it. Thanks. And if you're on Android, iPhone users, you can stop watching now, or you know, you probably stopped watching in the first 10 seconds, so who cares? Windows phone users, you don't exist anymore, sorry. But Android users, there's actually an audiobook app that mitigates that silence issue. Uh, it's called Voice. I'll put a link in the description for it. Uh, I personally really like it. It's the one that I've been using all the time. It has a really nice user interface, it has the feature to skip silence, so you don't actually have an issue. You can speed it up, it has a timer, looks really good. Um, again, I'll put a link and show the developer your support, I guess. I don't know how it works. Goodbye, Android users. iPhone users still here. Come join us on the Android side. I don't know. I'm biased. <laughs> join us.